Hello, it's David again. Um, so glad to be with you again today. And um, I'm going to do a couple of uh, videos about Pastor Jeff. And um, I was kind of hopeful I wouldn't need to do any more. But I got some emails and some comments that I really thought needed to be shared. And a very serious question that I really think needs to be asked of Pastor Jeff. And um, I also got an email about a video that Pastor Jeff did. Uh, one he did uh, a few weeks ago uh, at the time of the conference about uh, denominationalism. But the one in particular that needs to be addressed is one that he did uh, just the most recent one about uh, presenting his case for baptism not being necessary to salvation. And this is, uh, for me, this is a hot button issue because the very reality and integrity and power of the gospel is at stake in this question. The integrity of the word of God and the promises of God and the fullness of salvation and being able to enter into the fullness of the atonement and the authority and power of the atonement and the blood of Christ is at stake in whether or not baptism is a inherent part of the process of being cut out of the world and being brought onto the covenant path. So I'm going to make a, a whole video about that topic because it deserves it. And, you know, him having put out the standard evangelical view on that in a way that of course he's very nice and he presents it very persuasively and he presents it to my wonderful friends in the Latter-day Saints so I, I just uh, really am gonna have to respond to that but today in this video right here I just want to present uh, a few of these wonderful wonderful letters comments that I received about Pastor Jeff and, uh, and then I really want to address a question, a sincere question that I would really appreciate it if Pastor Jeff could answer. And uh, I say this in all sincerity. I have a lot of respect for him as a human being. I know he's sincere and is really trying to do God's will. And uh, our Father in Heaven gives people A's for effort. So, you know, I give, I give Pastor Jeff an A for effort for sure. But uh, still, I think there's uh, some real problems with what he's doing and how he's doing it. And I think that there's a question I would really like him to answer. So that's what this little video is about. So I think I'm going to start since, uh, you know, this to me this whole topic is a bit distasteful. But, you know, we're commanded to earnestly contend in Jude the epistle of Jude, verse 3, earnestly contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. And so, even if it's a bit distasteful, we have to not just delight in truth, but also denounce deception. So before we get into the comments and letters and my question for Jeff, I just want to uh, go ahead and play a lovely little song. At least I hope it's lovely. That I uh, uh, wrote just a few weeks ago. You've probably heard it before. It's just Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 1, verse 38, set to a 1, 4, 5 chord, chord progression of D, C, G, and G. Okay? So if you want to look up the lyrics, if you just turn to Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 1, verse 38, you have the lyrics right there. What I, the Lord, have spoken, I have spoken, I have spoken what I the Lord have spoken I have spoken I have spoken and I excuse not myself and though the heavens and the earth pass away and I excuse not myself and though the heavens and the earth pass away my word shall not pass away but shall all be fulfilled my 
Thy word shall not pass away, but shall all be fulfilled. Whether by mine own voice or by the voice of my servants, it is the same, it is the same, it is the same, it is the same. Whether by my own voice, or by the voice of my servants, it is the same, it is the same, it is the same, it is the same. But I, the Lord, have spoken, I have spoken, I have spoken. I have spoken, I have spoken. I excuse not myself, and though the heavens and the earth pass away, and I excuse not myself, and though the heavens and the earth pass away, my word shall not pass away, but shall all be fulfilled. My word shall not pass away, but shall all be fulfilled. Whether by mine own voice, or by the voice of my servants, it is the same, it is the same, it is the same, it is the same. Help us be doers of your words, and not hearers only. Help us be doers of your words, and not hearers only. Help us be doers of your words, and not hearers only. Help us be doers of your words and not hearers only. Help us be doers of your words, and not hearers only. Amen. Okay. It's wonderful to praise our amazing Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus. All right, let's see, where do I go now? Okay, I'm just going to read a few of these letters that were sent to me about Pastor Jeff and Hello Saints and his effect on people, their response. And, uh, and then go ahead and, and read my simple question for Pastor Jeff. A bit of a challenging question, but I'd really appreciate it if he could just give a simple, honest, yes or no answer. Okay, Abby wrote this. I found Pastor Jeff at a time when I was struggling with feeling the Spirit, with letting go of my favorite sins, and with strengthening my relationship with my Heavenly Father. I wasn't praying, and I was passively attending church. Pastor Jeff was very appealing, and I enjoyed his videos. He seemed to view the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints more charitably than others of his faith, and I found him interesting to listen to. I still had a firm belief in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but because I refused to repent, the Spirit wasn't with me. I finally got my head on straight and repented. I rebuilt my relationship with God, and the Spirit was with me constantly. I came across one of his videos again and decided to give it a watch. The difference in feeling I got when watching was immediately obvious once I had the Spirit with me while watching. It became so apparent, his true intentions. It was like instant warning bells went off in my mind. I guess what this long rant was meant to communicate is the importance of repenting and having the Spirit with you 
as well as the danger Jeff presents to other members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who are struggling in similar ways as I was. Those who don't have the Spirit with them can't always see past deception and are the most vulnerable. Well, Abby, thank you for that wonderful comment. I think a lot of people would echo that. Uh, then Deb, she wrote this. This is a wonderful, I think, very perceptive letter. Deb wrote, As an adult convert myself, and now being a 41-year veteran of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I've been watching Pastor Jeff with interest from the beginning of his Hello Saints podcast. Yes, he's handsome, intelligent, educated, and well-spoken. He seems very genuine and I'm sure has a wonderful marriage and family. Unfortunately, I have become increasingly disturbed on several fronts, including all that you have alluded to. I could not continue to watch his analysis of the Book of Mormon after the first one and never watched his Come Follow Me, Come Follow Me podcast. Why? Because he obviously has no desire to learn. It takes a very humble soul to understand that they don't know everything. He speaks with the voice of one having authority, but he contradicts our prophets and apostles. His study of the Book of Mormon is an intellectual analysis, and he made clear from the outset that he wasn't reading it to find out whether it was true. A humble man who really wants to know more about the church would have been touched by the Spirit by now, and his heart would have been changed. Intellectualizing about the truth puts one's spiritual life on hold. I love him and his wife and was thrilled to hear he was moving to Utah. However, as I have watched his interviews and interactions with Latter-day Saint podcasters, I've seen them almost silenced by his continual teaching and correction. They seem unwilling or unable to challenge him and are very agreeable. When one is unteachable, it may take something big to finally get their attention. I don't remember which prophet said this, but I know the story was recounted in a general conference address not too long ago. I believe it was President Hinckley who, when talking with a man who was already a Christian, told him very directly, Yes, but it's not enough. Baptism, the temple, and the covenants which accompany them seem to be somewhat of an affront to Pastor Jeff. He seems wary of anything that smacks of authority. But it is that very authority that he lacks, yet he speaks as though he already has it. I've always believed it's harder to teach those who are deeply committed to their own religion. Statistically, he's someone who will never join the church due to his age and religious background. It's a shame because he has the ear of many prominent members in Utah and has in his possession the greatest book on earth, yet he may never know what is right in front of him. I lost my entire family and all my friends when I joined the church at age 28. It often takes a mighty sacrifice in order to lay hold of the truth. I would do it all over again for what I have experienced and come to know. That kind of sacrifice might be a step too far for Pastor Jeff. Thank you for making this episode. I think you're right on the money and bless you for being willing to make the changes necessary in your own life to become a member of the church. It can't have been easy. P.S. Just going into a house of the Lord would have been enough to convince me that there is something more important to learn. Whew. Wow. Sister Deb, that was a wonderful balanced comment on your journey with and your evolving understanding of Pastor Jeff and where he's at and how sadly so many Latter-day Saint podcasters seem to be enabling him rather than loving him enough to effectively challenge him with the truth. I really don't believe that it could be better said than how you've said it, and thanks for your warm encouragement. And yes, it does cost much to embrace truth. At least it has for me and continues to do so. But like you, I consider the suffering of that to not even be worthy to be compared to the glory of what my eyes have finally been opened to in the restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ in these last days. Jeff's cup seems to be quite full, but for sure we need to pray for him that perhaps someday it won't be. In the meantime, Jeff for sure is doing his best to be a pastor, teacher, and guide 
to as many Latter-day Saints as allow themselves to listen to him. The capstone of this was his own plain admission in his own video that the why behind Hello Saints is to drive into us an understanding of Jesus that is rooted in truth. And also that he would take it upon himself to do his own version of Come Follow Me for his Latter-day Saint audience. Thanks so much for your astute comment. Much love, David. And then Bruce wrote this. I thought this was also excellent. David, some comments on Jeff and Hello Saints. Jeff has shined up his presentation a little so that gullible, kind words starved Latter-day Saints would fall for it. McCullough is clever, but still pointless, and his proposals are still inaccurate. Replacing criticism with curiosity <clears throat> is deceptive. He really means go in at closer range and data mine some up-to-date reasons to tell people they are wrong, unquote. So we are getting told we are wrong in a nicer way. So what? Lipstick on pigs and referring to dog tails as dog legs. It's still four legs and a tail, not five legs. Guess what, Jeff? Back at you. You are wrong. Constantine hijacked, gutted, and rebranded the real Christianity at Itznik, Turkey, then Nicaea in 325 AD. The conqueror then rewrote the religious history and practice to favor him, what the victors always do and have always done in a contest. I'm glad that Jeff's Latter-day Saint neighbors were kind to him when he moved here, because that is who we are. Good people are kind no matter what, because to be snarky to anyone would be bad form. I already know other Christian churches are against mine. There's no need to spend any further time on it. Unfortunately, after almost 200 years of slander, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints are so hard up for a kind word that they fawn over every possibility of one. So I, why am I writing to you and not Jeff? It's simple. Jeff would just delete it or ignore it. Hopefully, our people are not as gullible as it may seem. David, thank you for throwing in with us after years of thinking we were crazy. It was refreshing to have you not say the church was wrong to our face, and now you're making a big positive deal about being one of us. What we lifers like about you is that you can take the competition right into the face of the opposition. We lifelong types sound like lifelong types, and the opponents see us a mile away, so to speak. So there's always a certain amount of reserve. So I actually am not ashamed of my chosen theology because it works. <laughs> Protestants may take their mangled theology and put it where they choose. In my opinion, Jeff McCullough is a systemic feature of the establishment Christian universe and will never be different no matter what. There is some obvious word meaning behind this, namely pastor, as he introduces himself. Pastor means direct others in a congregation, and tell them things. Jeff does lots of telling. He always says, pastor reacts, and never pastor explores. If he ever said, pastor explores, the Bible and Missionary Alliance would have his head. Ministers of other faiths never investigate or change to ours before resigning their position. Jeff continues to see himself in the pastor role, even and especially the Latter-day Saints, whom he actually thinks are wrong. Interacting with Jeff ultimately is pointless, but we members of the Church of Latter-day Saints people do need to be respectful of the views of others. Sadly, the Latter-day Saint tolerance will never be reciprocated fully by professional clergy of Protestant faiths. I'm not sure what to suggest you do, David, it would be interesting to see if you could pull Jeff further into actual honesty. But if you did, the relationship would disintegrate. It has to. That is all I can think of for now. Have a great day, Bruce. <laughs> Whew. There you go. Well, Bruce, that was quite the letter. All right. Now, here's, here's my simple question for Pastor Jeff of Hello Saints. All right, this is a request from me to Pastor Jeff of Hello Saints. I simply ask you, Pastor Jeff, to tell us all, do you regard our leaders 
and all sincere members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as saints of God, set apart from the world as saints of God through the power of the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the gift of the Holy Ghost, or not. If you cannot publicly affirm that our leaders, especially our leaders, and the rest of us that are sincere in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, if you cannot publicly affirm that we are saints of God, why do you call us saints in the very title of your YouTube channel and videos? Is this not hypocrisy and deception and misrepresentation on your part? How is your cheerful, hello saints, not insincere flattery that actually suits you for the description in Proverbs 29, verse 5, a man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. We believe that you, Jeff, honestly believe in Jesus and in his atonement and that you will attain to some degree of heavenly glory. We don't believe that you are going to the lake of fire to be tormented for all eternity. In the name of Jesus and the spirit of truth, I call on you, Jeff, to either publicly affirm our sincere members and our leaders as saints of God that are headed to heavenly glory, or please, just in the name of simple honesty and integrity, stop flattering us by saying, hello, saints, and change the name of your YouTube videos and channel. Uh, wouldn't that be the honest and genuine and real thing to do? So anyway, I'd really appreciate it if you could answer this question. Do you regard our leaders and all our sincere members as saints of God, set apart from the world as saints of God by the blood of Christ, the atonement, and the gift of the Holy Ghost? Are we saints or not? And if we're not, why are you calling us? Hello, saints. Isn't that flattery? Anyway, that's my simple, honest question for Pastor Jeff of Hello, Saints. And I hope he goes ahead and answers it. I think it deserves an answer. And uh, anyway, much love, David. So anyway, see you again soon. I'm going to do that video about... Uh, Pastor Jeff's take on baptism uh, not being necessary to salvation. That's going to be the next one that I'm going to do. Love you all heaps, and thank you so much. Oh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for thy incredible mercy and grace, that you are the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. And... Uh, we just ask thee in the name of thy amazing son, Jesus, in the power of the Holy Ghost, that you would just uh, speak to Jeff's heart and cause him to truly open up to see the glory of the light of the restoration. And if he's not willing for that, that you would cause him to be honest and uh, that you would just uh, bring to light the reality of, of what he's doing. And I just pray for all of us that we could all be faithful and true, all the, all the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, that we could let our light shine. I just pray for every single member that's suffering. We want to pray that you'd strengthen our wonderful President Nelson and that you'd strengthen uh, Jeffrey Holland and comfort him in losing his wife. And the same thing with uh, President Eyring. And we just pray for every single person that listens to this that's suffering in any way, that you would touch them and help them and strengthen them, body, soul, and spirit. Help meet their deep needs as they seek first your kingdom. And we just ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Love you all. See you again soon.